the, the people. There have been people in every church where I've served that have just been fantastic. They've been uh, supportive of the ministry that I was involved in, that I felt called to, but supportive of the people around them. And I've been inspired just seeing uh, lay folks at work doing good things. Uh, got to be involved with Adult Seek Camp and was really inspired by that to see, see people, adults who were disabled, who reached out to help others. Uh, and they didn't feel disabled because they were able to do things for other folks and just, just pure joy and pure love and it was wonderful. Then worship. Uh, there have been moments of worship throughout the years that were just uh, really, really incredible where you felt God's presence at work and in people and what we were doing and uh, in more powerful ways. Being a worship leader, you don't always get to feel that. And so to experience those kinds of things was important. And being invited into people's lives, to do baptisms, to be there when family members passed away, uh, to be there and pray, uh, to visit folks in the hospital when they knew the, the, the days were short. Uh, just being part of their lives, those were all wonderful, wonderful experiences. And then working with youth and children, to see the delight in children and youth as they discover God's grace in special ways, as they get to do things where they get to serve and make a difference in other people's lives, that's been really good for me too. It's easy to talk about being grateful. I'm certainly perhaps most grateful for the experiences and the opportunities that I've had to serve, uh, particularly with uh, the formation of All Nations Fellowship, which had the motto of Christian by faith, diverse by design, because we intended from the first day to be a place that looked like heaven, where there was some of everybody there. First, a member, person to say I want to be a member was an Anglo woman, and the second was an African American man, and there were just uh, Hispanics, Asians, uh, American Indian, some of everybody was there in all the age groups, so that was certainly a uh, prime time in my life. And then um, serving as a district superintendent, being the first African American female, the clergywoman, to serve as a district superintendent in the North Texas Conference, I'm grateful for that. Um, being an adjunct at Perkins, teaching preaching, uh, that was a phenomenal experience. And last but not least, the St. Luke experience. Uh, we know that there are no perfect churches, no perfect people. And regardless of what happens in the church council meeting or the staff meeting at St. Luke, worship on Sunday morning is just, as they say, off the chain. Everybody's together. It's, uh, we're focused on praising God and just being real and authentic. Well, the opportunity uh, to be a minister itself is uh, very special to me. I was born and reared in the Methodist Church, a cradle Methodist, as it were. And early in my career, I felt a strong call to go into the ministry. And at the time, for some reason or another, or no reason at all, uh, I was somewhat overwhelmed at the prospect. I didn't know if I was quite ready for it or not, and went off and pursued a career in the law. And then, much to my surprise, uh, the Lord gave me an invitation I could not refuse. And I decided that that would be an opportunity I would not let go by again. And I started uh, that path. So just the overwhelming prospect of being given a second chance to be a minister, to have the opportunities that that presents that are so unique, uh, to be able to grow in areas that I didn't realize I had to grow so much more in. Be faithful to God and true to yourself. There will always be expectations, some that, that other people put on you, 
some that you put on yourself but it's important to stay connected with God and realize what God is really calling you to do. Be aware of your calling. Pursue your calling. Uh, God has gifted you each individually and uniquely. I would say um, stay connected and uh, in um, communication with the conference leadership. Uh, sometimes it's hard to trust the system. Learn to take care of themselves. I don't care what endeavor you're in, uh, boundary setting is important. And if you don't take care of yourself, nobody else will. And if you don't take care of yourself, you can't help anybody else. I have a long list of things. Uh, continue to serve in the church for one thing. Uh, I'm pastor at a church that worships every other Sunday now. And so that gives me alternate Sundays to go visit friends and worship in their churches. And I have a long list of churches I wanna visit. And so that's great. I have none because I don't plan on retiring. <laughs> uh, my retirement will be mandatory by virtue of the discipline of the United Methodist Church. I plan to continue at First United Methodist Church Richardson serving as an associate pastor in the caring ministry. Well, initially, a little bit of nothing to just take some time to be, to be at home, uh, to be with my husband. We've been married for 46 years. I don't know life without him. And to just reconnect, because uh, sometimes with ministry, you're away from what you love a lot and those you love. And so uh, initially, a little bit of nothing. Then we want to do some travel. I'm sure there's some writing in my future. Still uh, expect to be available to serve in the conference and to do some mentoring. Uh, I love uh, being a, a mentor pastor for interns, and I expect to do some of that. And then to spend a lot of time with my granddaughter. I have a 13-year-old, and uh, being able to be present and go to her track meets and, and just have those uh, conversations or around uh, some ice cream, um, to do some travel and just be grand, because that's what she calls me.